Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be covering the distance joint definition of the joint tutorials, and this joint is typically used for spring-like actions, um, or also to maintain a constant distance between two bodies while maintaining a rotational property. Um, you can also have alongside those spring-like properties a, a sort of um, you could use it like a trampoline or a springboard, diving board, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of neat things you can do with it. They're kind of fun to mess around with. Um, as you can see here, I have some things commented out. I'm going to be using that later to demonstrate a simple example of how you could use the distance joint. Um, do note, however, that unlike some of the other joints, the distance joint has no fixed rotation property so it still can rotate and stuff and it's kind of up to you to make sure it stays on its path and if you want that more um, hydraulic type of joint uh, where it has a fixed axis that it just slides along uh, you'll have to do some tricky maneuvering with the prismatic joint um, and that might be covered I'm not too sure yet but Regardless, the prismatic joint videos will go up sometime and you can check them out and maybe mess around with those. Now, to jump in to the distance joint, um, we have our distance joint definition uh, right here. I just have that there for us already. Um, and just like the body definition, you use that to set up the physical properties of the joint. Uh, essentially, with all joints, there are three requirements requirements, and that is having a body A, a body B for the two bodies that the joint is attached to, and then creating the joint in the world, just like you would with a body definition as seen down here. Um, so you have the body definition, and you have that uh, world.createBody, and that's how you throw it into the world. So back up here, let's uh, do the first two requirements, and get our body A in, and we'll just set that to body 1 right now. And then body B will be body 2. And just so you know what body 1 is, it's uh, just a um, simple box, uh, 32 by 32 pixels, and um, then we uh, it also has a fixed rotation. And then our body 2 is a, another simple box. Um, it's a 64 by 20, so it's more of an elongated rectangle. Um, it is static, so it will not move, and it does have no rotation. So, uh, essentially, you have a platform, and you're attaching this block that can move to it with this distance joint. So, now that we got the first two things set up, uh, let's just go ahead and see what we get when we create a basic distance joint. Okay, and there we are. And you'll notice uh, there's also the circle uh, that I'll be using to kind of show you the spring-like properties. Um, but if you noticed, it just kind of snapped to place and there wasn't really spring anything going on, but you can see how it's keeping that box hovering above uh, the static box that it's joined to with this blue line here. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, now this joint can rotate, as I mentioned before, it does not have a fixed rotation. Always note that. Um, if you want to achieve that, use a different kind of joint and you're going to have to set up your own kind of implementation of a spring, um, most likely with a prismatic joint. So let's say that uh, we do want to make this a spring-like joint. Um, there's a few things you'll have to consider. Uh, first is whether or not you want the two bodies to be collidable. Um, now, typically, I, I believe it's set to false by default, so any joined bodies uh, will not collide with each other anymore. As is standard in the box 2D world, uh, most bodies do collide with each other based on their um, collision bit mask. Uh, however, when you join them, they won't collide with each other anymore. So, 
we'll just keep that false right now. Um, later, I'm going to be setting that to true to kind of show you this demonstration I have for, for you. Um, and then let's get into some of the spring-like properties. So first thing is the frequency hertz variable. Um, now, this variable allows you to control the amount of spring allowed. So like um, the oscillation value, how, how much it can go down and how far it can go out from the length that it's given. Um, a distance joint relies on, uh, I'll also show you here real quick, a length variable. And as I mentioned before, it relies on a length variable as its constraint. Um, so let's just set that to real quick. Uh, and do remember again, when you're giving Box2D variables uh, data, you always want to divide. And when you're taking data from the Box2D world, you want to multiply by your pixels per meter uh, ratio. And so now we just kind of set it to twice that size. I'm just going to move that up there real quick, um, get it out of the way. And so yeah, back to our frequency hertz. Uh, as I said, it will control the amount of oscillation available. Now this kind of coincides with how uh, your world is stepping. So. I've read in the Box2D documentation, you don't want to have it anywhere over um, half this number for your stepping. And that's because of a certain physical uh, law with the spring situation. And you'll get some very strange outcomes if you break that. So essentially, we don't want to set our frequency hertz to anything over 30 in this case, because we're stepping by um, essentially 60 frames per second. So always keep that in mind. You, you really don't need any more than 30. If you're setting it to 30, you might as well not set your frequency hertz at all. As you'll observe, when I set it to 30, um, we'll just kind of get the same output we had before. And there you go. See, uh, it's also coordinating with the length we gave it at 64. Uh, pixels there and so let's go back out of here and now let's let's see what happens when we turn it to one now by turning it to one it has the ability to oscillate all the way down to its base and as you see how much more springy it is it uh, has that elasticity effect to it and that's all nice and everything but we want to be able to control how soft that landing is and how bouncy the spring actually is, right? Um, so there is another variable that we can get into. So ddef, uh, and that'll be the damping ratio. Now, this will kind of control how fast your joint will try to return to that length constraint. Now, essentially, you can observe this to be like a softness to your joint and typically it goes anywhere between 0 to uh, 1 and anywhere over it, it's going to be pretty instantaneous just it'll be acting exactly like setting the frequency to 30 again um, as you'll see here if you remember how springy it was and the frequency hertz setting it to 1 it won't really have a lot of budge to it it'll it'll still have that tiny bit of elastic force to it, like if forces press on it, um, because we do have the frequency at one, it does have the give to go down there, but unless acted on by another force, it will just kind of maintain that, and um, it'll be very slow moving, and it'll just kind of ease into it very, very slowly, achieving that, uh, going back to that length constraint. And so, Let's kind of shrink that down and maybe increase this real quick. So you can observe some different happenings when you kind of change those numbers. So right now we lowered our damping ratio to be a little bit lower. So that'll make our spring really, really soft and nice and springy. Um, you know what, let's turn that just to half it. And then uh, our frequency hertz doesn't have a lot of give, but it has enough for us to work with. Um, and so it'll be 
like an actual spring and you'll see that here so it has more response because the ball was just dropping on it like that um it, it there was no it, it's not as heavy so it wouldn't have much to push the spring down to kind of load it that way and throw the ball back up but if you observe when we give more uh, frequency or less frequency then it kind of gives a softness effect and it's it's a little hard to tweak those variables the way you want you just got to kind of mess around with them and it also depends on the weight or the mass of the object you're dropping on it and the force or the velocity at which that object is coming at your spring um, however let's get into something that uh, I want to show you that you need to be careful of um, so up here I have this line of code which uh, when I press space will apply a sort of impulse force to the center of the ball body which was body 3 um, ignore the poor naming conventions um, I just kind of set it up that way um, so you have apply force to center and I gave it a 1 for a reason now if that were zero, we just observe the ball just kind of pushing down on the block, and um, that's not really what I want to demonstrate. So I'll press it, and you can kind of see that spring effect, how it has that give, and I can keep pressing it. And there's something you can notice there also. I guess I should demonstrate that. Um, if the joint is zero or less than zero. Um, I, I believe it has to be less than zero of the constraint it's trying to achieve. It will just kind of flip to wherever it has the ability to try and extend to that constraint, uh, that length variable. Um, so let's go back to putting that at one to really show you what I was getting at. Now, when I press space, there is a one on the x-axis so it'll push my ball to the right just a little bit and that's all I really need to do to demonstrate um, what you need to watch out for when using a distance joint. Things have seemed all nice and good and it's been on a single axis just on the y-axis going up and down and that's not a good example of what the distance joint does so I'll press space real quick and that little bit of impulse to the right was just enough to make this fall over and become unaligned with that uh, axis that it was on. And now you can see it's still 64 pixels in length. However, as I mentioned before, there's no fixed rotation, and that is the unfortunate part. So we'll get out of that, bring that back to zero, and uh, that's essentially all you need to know to get started with a distance joint. So right now I'm going to get started with a basic sample for you guys. Um, these are just box bodies and you'll kind of see where they land uh, to kind of contain this springy box in the center here. Um, and you can kind of observe already I have a sort of cannon set up almost. Um, so I'll go back up here and I'll uncomment some of this stuff and I'll explain it in just a second and I have a field uh, a regular distance joint not a distance joint definition but a distance joint uh, called DF now when you add a joint to the world um, you can it actually returns the joint it created, not the joint definition, but the joint it made from that joint definition. And so you can just cast that real quick because all it returns is a regular joint type. Um, and so now we have a reference to that joint that was made in the world. And that's how you can kind of keep track of things and control those joints on the fly when you're doing your logic or your game logic. And so as you can see up here, uh, this is just a reset for the ball. Um, nothing special there. I return that back to zero so it stays centered um, and then I also have uh, an X and a Z press check to see uh, 
I can choose the length of the distance joint. So I can change that constraint on the fly. Um, if I press X, I'll slim it down to 32, and if I press Z, I'll stretch it back out to 64. And as you can recall, it always tries to meet that constraint, so it'll always uh, maintain that property. And I'm keeping these uh, settings for the frequency and dampening ratio, or damping ratio, um, to still have those spring-like effects, and that seemed like a nice, nice rough estimate of what I'm kind of going for. Um, so just to see real quick, if I press Z, or I'm sorry, X, you'll notice that it goes down, and then I can press Z again, and it goes up. Now, I guess that was a little, it just wasn't very satisfying. It didn't do anything to the ball. Um, this is kind of in part due to uh, the damping, or no, 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 it would be the frequency. So what we want to do with the frequency is just kind of increase it to three. Now this will give us a much stronger response to return back to that length. So we can see there, it's very immediate. A um, little bouncy, uh, that's kind of nice. It keeps the spring settled for us. So uh, we'll press X, and then we can press Z. You see that? And it can kind of shoot the ball up and down. Well, that's pretty cool. You can do a lot of things with that. Um, just that nice little interpolation effect of uh, shooting something out. And you can do a lot of things with that, like such as like maybe even a sliding door where it kind of compresses down real quick. And like I said, that you know that that could just be. 0 uh, or 30. 0 is the same as 30, uh, essentially, in the way it's going to act. So, or maybe not. It's, uh, I guess that's just instantaneous. Um, 30 is still pretty rough. But you can kind of see where we're going with this. Um, you, can, you can do some fairly interesting things. Okay, yeah, so 30 will definitely apply all that force um, for you. Yeah. yeah, so you can mess around with it. Like I said, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, hope you like this video. I, I might do more things with the distance joint, but there's really not much you can demonstrate with it. There's um, not much more than what I just showed you there. Uh, as far as small demos go, um, you can set up your own contraptions and stuff and just mess with them. It's always good to practice with these joints and see what kind of interesting things you can create. Um, so with that, uh, this video is kind of done for distance joints and I'll be moving on to other joint videos. So like, comment, subscribe, the usual, and see you next time.